Hi everyone. Hey. Welcome back to Conceptual Wing Academy. Ladies. We finally have my right. <laughs> Don't come for us in the comments. <laughs> okay, we got enough complaints. <laughs> okay, since we have been covering various art fundamental topics in our previous episode, like proportion, perspective, uh, observational drawing, freehand, perspective. This episode, we want to bring this all together and show you guys how to execute a finished looking drawing with one weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so unlike certain types of fine art or abstract art, concept art is all about visually communicating your ideas across in a clear and concise way. Whether this to be with your clients or your art director or just like people from other departments, yeah. This is why finishing level is really important. So in school, we were actually told by our teachers that if, if you give me a task to do some thumbnail sketches, I would never actually submit my actual sketches that I use for my own reference, but my finished drawings that look kind of sketchy on the yeah, edges, yeah. When, when clients ask for sketches, it's never a rough sketch. Yeah. yeah. So you don't show them like idea sketches that you yeah. do for Just yourself. What's in your brain and what's in their brain is very different. different. The sketch mm -hmm. is not like final or complete. Yeah. Understanding line weight can not only improve communication and professionalism but also allow you to define and achieve different art style. If you see these two examples of line weight in manga, a lot of the different in art style lines in the way how artists treat their line weights. Mm -hmm. So in this episode, we will discuss line weight hierarchy, line execution, finishing level, and focal points. In order to accomplish consistent line weights, we must create a system for ourselves to follow to often known as line weight hierarchy. This means the different thickness in line or line treatment respond to certain purpose or objective. Remember, every line you make on the page should have an intention. So every artist might have a different set of rules that they follow in which expresses a unique art style, right? Mm -hmm. um, however, in this simple one, two, three framework we're going to show you, you can follow this to achieve a logical and cohesive line weight. Medium line can use as your overall expression of forms and contour inside the object. This can also be your normal line thickness, like default lines. Yeah, or something like that. Just... yeah, in which you reference other lines weight against. Mm -hmm. Thick lines can be used to express outlines of silhouettes, overlaps of objects, or to emphasize areas of shadow and ambient occlusion. Thin lines are used to delineate small details and textures, such as hatching, shading, or for aging details. Um, this should have a larger contrast compared to your thickest lines. I would recommend making a note to yourself, your line weights smooth and keep them on the side of the paper whenever you're drawing so you can always refer them. In that way, you can keep all your sketches consistent. Next, let's talk a bit about line execution. There are many kinds of ways you can use a line. Here are a few. Solid line. The simplest line, whether it be curved or a straight line, the solid line is a great articulation of form and creates a continuous boundary. Second, broken or dotted line. This type of line is great for communicating transparency, especially when you are drawing the draw-through object. So for the viewer, they can understand better where is the internal detail, where is the external. Broken line can also be used to express fine textures. Mm -hmm. Hatching. Hatching is a great way of grabbing form. It also gives the drawing a nice, raw, sketchy kind of look. Shading. This is another good way of revealing forms in line drawing. Shading uses many fine lines to create a gradient that helps define changes in your plane angles. Eraser. Lastly, the eraser tool. The eraser should be seen as a brush tool in and of itself. Mm. Subtraction can sometimes be just as impactful as creating marks on the page. Look how a texture can be easily sculpted and created using only the eraser tool. After we have decided on our line weight rules and execution, let's address some common mistakes beginners might have every time when they draw. Firstly, chicken scratches. Um, this is usually a confidence issue of not being able to draw a line in one shot. Um, don't worry, we've all been there. One way you can fix this is to practice only using a pen or a ticket markers. Not only does this force you commit to the line, it also makes you try to lessen the scratching or else the ink will blur together or smirch. Also try using cheap sketchbook or recycled paper. Yeah, it kind of takes the pressure of perfectionism yes, yes. and 
Yeah. I know a lot of people buy like those really expensive sketchbooks, but I would be never, I'd never be able to like. I have those leather carbon sketchbook, and I just keep it in. I'll never use them <laughs> for five years. <laughs> Another really neat trick Kingston told me when I was learning tattooing is by tapering your lines when you have to execute a really long line. Uh, this way you can seamlessly connect them together without having to draw it in all at once. Second, we must address close path. Too many times do I see students handing work that have potential but is ruined by an unfinished look because they don't close their drawing path. Mm -hmm. Remember to check and recheck all the objects in your scenes after you think you have finished your drawing to make sure all your lines are there. Mm. On the other hand, when you have multiple objects in the scene that overlap each other, it might become difficult for the viewer to discern the distance between them. Um, this is when the eraser tool comes in handy. If you erase a tiny sliver between where these lines intersect, it immediately makes the overlap more obvious and legible, therefore giving your drawing more depth. Lastly, the worst thing of all, bad tangents. If you see that two objects in your scenes are sharing the same edge, corner, or line, this could mean that they are creating a bad tangent, which is, in short, destroying the sense of overlappings or 3D or depth. Even worse, it makes it difficult or confusing for the viewers. Mm -hmm. Yep, make sure you keep an eye out for those ones, or else Kingston will yell at you for two hours in class. No. <laughs> You might be asking, okay, so I understood all of that case then, but it takes me hours to complete one single line drawing. How do you get the motivation to do such detailed artwork, uh, line art or whatever? Mm. The answer lies in focal point. Yeah, starting a drawing in the main focal point can really help to conserve your energy and allow all your best efforts to be put in the area that will create the highest impact for your viewers on the first read. Um, other less important areas of the drawing won't be scrutinized as much, so therefore will require less time spent. Always divide your first, secondary and third focal point and start your finished line drawing on those perspectives. You should be putting in most visual information in the focal point. This can be details, density, texture, contrast in line weight, basically all the things we mentioned before. Mm. This will allow you to sort of choreograph which areas you want to draw the viewer's eye to first. Then you can slowly fizzle out the details and contrast as you leave these focal areas to less important areas. These are known as transitions and are used to create a seamless and comfortable viewing experience. Yes, concept art is all about transitions. Not just in drawing but also in design. We will talk about how important is transition in the future episode. Try to do a clean line work on top of the sketch, focusing on the four things we mentioned today. Line weight hierarchy, line execution, finishing level, and focal points. After implementing these tips, you should have a presentable looking drawing with high level of finishing. Make sure you share your finished work on the Discord group link below. We would love to see that. So we've received some comments saying that our videos might be too fast to follow. So we actually have a written blog post of some of the key points that we've covered in our video. So if you guys want to check that out and follow it step by step, it's hosted on the Mages website and it'll be linked in the description below. As always, make sure to like, subscribe and comment below if you guys enjoyed the video and if you have any other questions you'd like us to answer in future episodes. Until then, see you guys! Bye.